Hello and welcome to Heaven Wise. In this video, I'm going to teach you how to make a character move using the WASD keys. This video will be divided into 5 key parts so you could grasp and absorb the knowledge in the most efficient way. I have just created this new project and it is completely blank. There is no work done here. So it is the best scenario for you to learn the character movement because we will be building it from scratch. So let's begin the tutorial. Step 1. New character setup. What we need right now is a character and since this is a blank project, we need to make one of ourselves right now. Open your assets browser and make a folder here. Right click and select the new folder. Name it blueprints. Open it and again do a right click. Now we are making a blueprint here. Select the blueprint class and choose character blueprint. Because what we want to make is a character. Now name this blueprint. I always name it something like BP main character. Now double click on it and open it. Here we can see several tabs like components tab, viewport and details tab. And you might be already familiar with these because these are available in almost all the blueprints. What's new in this character blueprint is that it has a capsule component by default and character movement associated with it. What we want to do is to add a mesh to our character, but we don't have one. So we're going to fab and right now fab has came back to Epic Games Launcher and we can access it even easier. Here we're gonna search for a character. You can purchase characters of different qualities here, but I'm gonna go with a free one. This one looks good and I have already downloaded it for the project. Now we are gonna click on the Unreal Engine option on the side and go to library. Scroll down and we should be able to find our character. Here simply click on the add to project button and this window will pop up. You should find your project here. Choose your project and then click on the add to project button. This will download the character 3D model and then add it to your project. After it's done, open the assets browser of your project and a new folder should be there. Now go back to your BP main character blueprint and select the mesh. Scroll down on the details panel and find the mesh option. You should click on the none option there and choose the character mesh that we just downloaded and add it to your project. It should have the name SK survival character. Now as you can see our character is not aligned with the forward direction at all. In fact our character is not even on the ground. We have to fix this first. First, click on the perspective button and choose either the right or left. This will give us a side view of the character which is perfect for aligning the ground position of the character. We can drag the character down and make sure his feet and bottom of the capsule collision is on the same level. We don't want our character to sink into the ground nor levitate a feet above. We can go back to perspective now. Now for facing the right direction, we can simply have our mesh selected in the component and then change the rotation values in the details panel. If we enter negative 90 on the blue option, it should perfectly align the character. What now we want to do is to add a camera to our character so we could see when this character becomes our main character in the game. Right now we have nothing to see with. So first, we need to add a spring arm. Select the mesh on the component panel and then click on the add button. Type a spring arm and then click on it to add it. You can name it anything you like. I like the default name spring arm. Spring arm is like a tripod for our camera and camera is what we will be able to see from. So while having a spring arm selected, click on the add button and type camera and add it. This will attach the camera to our spring arm. You can adjust various settings of both camera and spring arm right now on the details panel. I personally just want to hire the spring arm a bit just to make it feel more like a game third person view. Step 2. Setup Game Mode 
Right now we can bring our character to our 3D environment here, but that won't mean that it's the character we are going to possess. Doing this only makes a copy of it. What we want is for our game to begin and spawn us as the main character. For that to happen, we need to make a game mode. To make a game mode, we need to go back to our blueprints folder, right click and choose blueprints. On picking a pattern class window, we're gonna choose game mode base. We can see the details of game mode base here. It says game mode base defines the game being played, its rules, scoring and other facets of the game type. So click on it to make one and name it. I'm gonna name it main game mode. Now open it. What we have to do here is only see the details panel and find the default pawn option. Click on the drop down and choose our character blueprint. And that's it. Now we can go to our level and on the details panel there should be a world settings. If there isn't one you can simply click on the window button on the top and choose world settings and it will appear here. Now what you need to do is to click on the game mode override option and select the main game mode that we created. This basically makes the entire game follow the rules of main game mode that we made and main game mode says that the default pawn or character in the game is, is gonna be our main character. Now if we click on the play button, we can see that we are the main character and we can see through the camera that we just added. That's it for the step 2. Step 3. Make input actions and input mapping context. Now we need to specify some buttons in the project. In order to do that, we first need to make input actions. Open your content browser and make a new folder. Name it input. Now open it. Inside it, right click and then hover over to the inputs option and then select the input action option. Let's name this IA underscore move forward. Make another one and name it IA underscore move right. Open them one by one and change the value type to axis 2D vector 2D. Now we need an input mapping context. Input mapping context is like a collection of inputs that we can create and add to our character and then we can program our character to do certain things when the buttons are pressed. Inside the input folder, right click and hover over the input option. You will see the last option on your right. Click on it. I like to name it the IMC, but you can name it anything you like. Now open it. Here. You can see the mappings and as you can see there is none. So we need to map our input actions here. Click on the plus icon and then open this drop down. From the list of input actions we need to select our input action IA move forward. After that we should add another input action by pressing the plus button again. And this time we need to add the IA move right. Now we need to set up our keyboard buttons here, so that when we press the keyboard button, it will trigger the IA move forward or move right, and then we can program movement when IA move forward or move right is triggered. Click on the plus button next to IA move forward and IA move right, and make sure we have two input slots under each of them. Now go to the first one under the move forward and click on the keyboard icon. Now it's asking us to press a button. We need to press W here because we need the forward button to be W. Now go to the second one and now we need to press the S button because it's the backward button. We need to make sure we do one thing here and that is to negate the S button because we want it to do the opposite of W button. We're gonna do the same for the move right input action. Click on the keyboard button under the move right and press the D button because it is the right movement. And then press A button for the last one. Make sure we add a modifier of negate for A as well, so that our character move to opposite direction of right. Step 4. Get input mapping context. This step should have been a part of the fifth step, but I'm gonna separate it to emphasize on how important it is. 
as a beginner, you're not gonna make much sense of it. So I would like you to memorize this or keep a screenshot of it for whenever you need it. What we're going to do now is to add the input mapping context or input collection to the character blueprint of ours so we could make it do certain movements when the button of the collection are pressed. So we're gonna open the BP main character and then open the event graph. This is where all the coding happens using the blueprints. We don't need these two so we're gonna delete it. Here, we need to first get controller. From controller, we need to cost two player controller. We need the execution pin to go to cost two player controller from event begin play. Now from S player controller, we need to add an enhanced input local player subsystem. And at the end, we become able to add an input mapping context. Choose the IMC from the drop down and also connect the execution pin. We can make a comment here by pressing C and clicking. And name this get input mapping context. Make sure it covers all the associated nodes. This entire code that we made here adds the input mapping context to our character. And this is it for this step. Make sure to memorize this or keep a screenshot of it for future uses. Step 5. The character movement. So this is the final step. We need to right click and add our input actions here. Write IA move forward and select the one under enhanced action events. Right click on its action value and select split a structure pin. This will separate X value and Y value. From its trigger, we need to make a add movement input node. Now make a node called get actor forward vector. This node takes the forward direction of the character into consideration. Connect the return value to the world direction and also connect the x value from IA move forward to the scale value on the add movement input. Now if we hit play, we can move forward and backwards properly. Now we have to do the same for IA move right. Right click and add IA move right. Split struct is action value pin. From its trigger, drag and make an add movement input. Now make a get actor right vector. Connect it to world direction and take the x value and connect it to the scale value. And that should make our character move right and left. Now press play and now we should have all four buttons working. Perfect. Now you can organize these blueprints by bringing them closer and aligning them. At the end, make sure to add a comment to your blueprint. This will save you in future when your project gets bigger. This was for today's tutorial. If you want more of these tutorials, make sure to subscribe because I'm gonna make tutorial about everything on the Unreal Engine. This can be a learning experience for you or a refreshment for your knowledge. And also join my Discord server where I will be able to where I will be available and you could talk to me personally. Take care and see you soon.